This kind of self-reflection can provide clarity, it can boost your confidence, and it can keep you aligned with your creative goals. Welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. On the show, it's my job to tease out the creative solutions my guests are coming up with to change the world through creativity, social action, and mindset. I also give you tips and techniques so you can do the same. This episode is brought to you by my class, Meditation for Busy People, where you'll learn how to relieve stress and discover clarity and joy in just five minutes a day. It's also brought to you by the Brain FM app and this podcast host, Podbean. Also, follow the podcast on Instagram or TikTok and check out our shop for merch, music, and musings. The links are all in the show notes. Hey there, and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Today, I want to talk about something that a bunch of my clients have asked about, and that is making the transition from corporate life, corporate job, corporate work to pursuing your creative dreams. In other words, how do you go from the cubicle to becoming a craftsperson or an artist? What are the steps to take and what are some of the pitfalls you might need to watch out for? Because it's a big transition, right? It's a big step and it's got its challenges for sure, but it can also be incredibly rewarding. For myself, I spent time working what you could call in the corporate field. I had corporate jobs for sure over the years. I also spent time working at the National Geographic Society as well as NASA for many, many years. And while the work itself was not particularly corporate, I was working for corporations. I was a contractor, so I was working for corporations as I did it. And I transitioned from being full-time as a contractor working for corporations to someone who was doing full-time contracting and part-time music. And the ratios of what I did as far as what was full-time and what wasn't changed over the years. And about 20 years ago, I went, okay, that's it. I'm ready. And I left the corporate world and embraced being an entertainer, being a professional musician. And I've added other avenues of creative work to that over time. I'm a writer. I'm an author. I do this podcast. I'm an entertainer in lots of ways. I'm a coach. I do all sorts of things to supplement my income so that I can make a living while doing the creative work that I want to be doing. But it didn't, as I said earlier, it didn't come without its challenges. And it takes it takes time. If you've spent a lot of time in the corporate world and you want to make that transition, know that it's unless you do a take this job and shove it and you have all the savings in the world to jump ship and go for it, you really are going to want to sort of take it slow and give some thought to the things that you need to be thinking about and doing as you make this transition. And I'm going to outline five pretty critical things I think you need to know before taking that leap. And I'm going to provide you with a few concrete techniques to help you as you do so. Okay, so let's get to it. First, I think the thing you need to look at is your mindset. It takes a real shift of your mindset in order to be able to go from I, I have a job uh, and a paycheck that I can rely on full time to the more uncertain world of the freelancer, the artisan, the craftsperson, the artist, the musician, the dancer, the whatever. It takes it, it takes a real shift in your ability and it also takes a, a shift in your lifestyle, too. But one of the first things that you can do is really to start that mindset shift, I want to ask you to start doing some positive affirmations. You need to change the way you think of yourself, right? So part of this is sort of starting to say things like, I am an artist. I am a creative. I am a craftsperson. I am a dancer. I am a writer. I am a whatever it is you are. And in fact, it's interesting. I made a list and maybe I'll I'll post it with the episode show notes here. I made a list recently of all the different creative pursuits, creative potential careers that are out there. And I had friends help me with that, actually. I I put it out on social media and asked people, what are creative pursuits? What are creative careers? Because if it's a creative pursuit, it's possible, if it has an audience, for it to also be a creative career. And we we ended up with a list of something like 60 or 70 different things that you can do that would be considered art or creativity. So you need to start thinking of yourself as that person. 
if you want to be a painter, you need to start thinking of yourself as a painter. You need to start thinking of yourself as a musician or a dancer or a calligrapher or whatever it is that you have been secretly dreaming of doing, but maybe haven't pursued uh, as a career or as a paying job of any sort. So you need to start shifting your mindset and how you refer to yourself. But the other positive affirmations that you might want to do are also uh, things like uh, another one you can try. I am capable of creating a successful creative career. Ooh, that's a good one, right? Because because you need to know that you can. You need to think that you can. If you are walking into this kind of going, oh, I'm not even sure if it's even possible. I don't even, uh, what kind of success can you expect if you're walking into it already terrified, right? So you have to start thinking about this. And I'm going to say it again. I'm capable of creating a successful creative career. Uh, Another one is I trust in my creative abilities, really starting to shift the way you think about all of this so that you start thinking of yourself as this being possible, right? This is something that I can do. Now, is it going to come right away? Probably not. It's going to take work. That doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means it's going to be a fair amount of work to get there. And I think these affirmations can help sort of reframe and rewire your thinking and build some confidence in your decision to do it in the first place. Another technique you can try is visualization. I'm going to encourage you to take a little bit of time every day to imagine yourself really thriving in whatever your creative career is, like really enjoying success. Picture it, flesh it out for yourself. Picture the projects that you're working on, the clients you're collaborating with, and the the joy and satisfaction that you feel in doing what you're doing, right? The practice, I think it'll inf- it, it will reinforce your belief in the path you're choosing. And that's so important, believing that it's possible, believing that you can, visualizing yourself as already successful at it is going to go such an incredibly long way to getting you there. Okay. The next thing that I would say is you need to think about communication. You're going to have to talk to your friends and your family, the people who you are closest to, the people who rely on you and and on whom you rely about your plans. You're going to need to talk about them. And when when you're talking about your plans with friends and family, I'm going to encourage you to think about doing it like a story, right? Share Share the path you've decided to go on as if it's a narrative. I know I, I have got writer's brain. It's true. I just finished writing my my first play, and I'm thinking a lot about story arcs and narrative and things like that. And so, so I'm always going to default to that nowadays. It looks like story and music. Is it any wonder I love musical theater? Anyway, if you can share the path that you're on as a story and... If you can highlight those those instances of inspiration and the challenges you've envisioned and the challenges you've already overcome and sort of the imagination that you have, the vision that you have for your future, I think that kind of well thought out, even though this is only the perspective, right? This is only the possible, but if it's well thought out and well grounded in what has happened and what is happening, I think it's going to make your decision to pursue a creative career much more relatable and it's going to help the people in your life connect with your vision and your passion. And also you want to make sure that you are realistically able to make these things happen to sort of ease their fears, because they're going to have some fears, especially if you are the person who is mostly in charge of earning the money in your in your family or in, in your partnership or whatever. If you're the one mostly in charge of making sure there's food on the table, deciding to make this change is going to be very jarring for the people in your life. So you're going to need to really think it through and figure out the financing and all of that. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But then you also need to communicate that and allay those uncertainties and allay those fears realistically. I think it's so important. And the thing is, I think that they're going to have some fears around it. So there's not much to be done except for to really listen. And that's another technique. I, I can't recommend active listening highly enough here because when you start talking about this transition that you want to make, you're going to need to be open to the feedback of the people who love you 
and their concerns, right? Because they're going to have concerns, I guarantee it. This is not to say you should listen and adhere completely to what they say. I'm saying you're going to want to actively listen and really acknowledge their feelings and also whatever feelings it brings up for you because their perspectives as people who know you and love you are going to be really important. And also you have to remember, sometimes their perspectives are based in their own fears. So they they may go, oh, no, no, you can't do that. You can't leave your job to go make tie-dye for a living. Well, maybe they fear that you can't, but that doesn't mean you can't. You're going to have to communicate through all of that with them to make sure that they understand your plan And that it's not fly by night and woohoo, I'm just doing this and I'm out. It's more that you've thought about it and this is how you plan to do it and plan to do it effectively and consistently so that they aren't afraid, but also so that you understand that when they give you advice that says, no, 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 don't do it, that you understand by active listening where that advice is coming from. Is it coming from the concern about you and your dreams or is it coming from a certain amount of fear that you might have sparked up for them when you said that their life is going to be a little bit less stable if you make this decision. And it will if they rely on you for financial help or for support in that way. And all of a sudden you're going, well, my finances are going to become a little bit unstable, more unstable, I I could say, as I make this transition immediately you know that they're going to go to that place of, oh, but what about me? And so this is an opportunity to really talk about this and get it straightened out for both of you or all of you so that you understand where the other people are coming from. And I think that not only shows respect, but it also allows for a really more constructive dialogue among all of you. And I think it's a chance to address any worries and to to, to really demonstrate your commitment, your level of commitment to the art that you want to be doing and that probably you've always wanted to be doing, but haven't been feeling like you could. All right. So I talked about finances for a minute. Let's get super practical to ensure that you do sort of have a smooth financial transition I want to ask you to consider something called dual budgeting, right? You create a detailed budget that covers both your current sort of corporate job that you're doing and all all the expenses inherent to that and the potential costs of your creative career. I think that will give you a clear picture of the financial adjustments you're going to need to make and help you plan accordingly. It's so important to do that, and I cannot tell you how important it is because, uh, honestly, when you make this transition, it can be jarring. When I made the transition from working at NASA full time to doing music full time, honestly, I spent a lot of time working 80, 90 hour weeks because I would leave my corporate NASA job and then I would go straight to teaching music or I had a gig. And luckily my then partner, now husband was really supportive because he too is an artist and he understands and we sort of made do, but it did take some cost cutting measures and it also took a lot of my energy to do sort of both careers at the same time. Now I did it that way because I was, uh, I, you know, I'm sort of saying learn from my mistakes. I was just done. I couldn't do NASA full time anymore because of various things that were going on, even though I love my time at NASA, things, politics changed and NASA is an executive branch agency. And when government sort of changes hands, how much funding NASA gets changes. So I kind of got tossed into this going probably a little sooner than I would have liked, but I kind of made the decision, you know what, I'm going to take this as a sign from the universe and I'm just going to make it happen. And so I did, but it did take a fair amount of work. So this is why I'm saying that now my way of guiding you, if this is something you're interested in doing, is to say, okay, take take the time to make sure your finances are in alignment with what you want to do. Because if they're not, it's going to be a lot of stress and a lot of uncertainty. And again, if you're the main sort of breadwinner, it's going to be uncertainty for the people in your life who rely on you. Now, this is not to say that they get to just rely on you unless they're your children or whatever. But it does mean that you have to have those conversations ahead of time and you need to budget very carefully. You need to know what you can and can't afford to do and when. Okay, another technique to think about is multiple income streams. 
Can you offer workshops? Can you offer freelance services? Can you sell your creations? If you're a painter, you might sell your paintings to private collectors or to hotels or to other places. You know, see if you can make friends with gallery owners and see if you can get your stuff into galleries. If you're a musician, I spent a lot of time teaching voice lessons. And in fact, during COVID, I did uh, something like 14 weeks, maybe 15 weeks, even longer, where I taught free voice lessons just because to keep myself sharp, if you will, because we weren't leaving the house. So I taught voice lessons on Zoom. And I did that for free to keep myself sharp, to keep my skills up. But it also helped me uh, get more students later on who wanted to, who heard what I was doing and who wanted to uh, learn more about how I teach singing and voice and speaking and communication. And it got me more clients. Now that wasn't actually my goal, to be honest. I I just wanted to have something to do to keep my skills and to also do, do things to help others because everybody was feeling, you know, stuck indoors. But I think anything that you can do to, help people see you as an expert in your field because you are and to help make that income come in if it's multiple income streams nothing wrong with that right so if you diversify your income sources that can provide more stability during that transition period and it's going to be a way to mitigate financial risks and it's going to help you have a steady flow of revenue a steady flow of income and it's so important particularly in these tough financial times you need to have that as much as possible okay taking steps to leave your job might involve again that phased approach like I did when I left NASA. I went from working full-time at NASA and then full-time music for a while and then 30 hours at NASA and full-time music, then 20 hours at NASA and then 10 hours NASA until I was five hours and then I finally went, okay, that's it. The contract is over. I'm not re-upping. And then I did a few more contract things. I did a few uh, video productions for NASA after that, but then I was done. I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do music professionally full time. And I did that for a while. And then I went, okay, I have other interests. And I started writing. So I supplemented my musician income with writing books and also teaching workshops on how to write and teaching workshops on how to use your voice and how to communicate. And I still do that in part because it is extra income and in part because I love teaching people and coaching people on how to communicate better, how to use their voices for their highest good. So that is something that you can do, you can have that phased approach, but the way to get sort of started on that is to set really specific milestones and deadlines. So for example, decide on a date to launch your creative idea, whatever it is, your creative pursuit, you're going to have a launch date or you want to reach a certain income goal. If you break down that transition into manageable steps and sort of clear timelines on when things are going to happen, it's going to help you stay focused and it's going to help you stay accountable. Because if you're not accountable, then things slip and then you go, wait, I was supposed to do that back in September. It's December and I haven't done it yet. Uh Uh-oh. So you want to make sure that you have those things and you have, you know, what I've done before is I've put a a big uh, laminated piece of paper on the wall and I write things down. And as I as I complete them, I put big, huge check marks. I love putting check marks. If you listen to the show, you know that I love putting check marks in things to say, "Ah, I done did it. I love it. It makes me feel really good. And so uh, I that's what I do now. I use Asana, which is an app that's wonderful about sort of being task oriented by project and getting things done. And I have an intern, shout out to Peter, the intern, and he and I work on it together, work on the things that I'm trying to achieve. And he helps me stay on track and he also helps me do the things that I need to do for my business. So another way to to do this, this phased approach is to cultivate a mindset of growth, right? If you embrace challenges as opportunities for learning and development And if you seek out new skills, if you network with other people who are in the same field or in different field who are doing creative things, and if you stay open to feedback, again, that's that's going to really generate some mindset shifts that are going to empower you to adapt and thrive in your new creative journey. Okay, last, I want to encourage you to consider seeking support. 
Instead of just trying to do this all by yourself, you might start a mastermind group, find a mentor. These are things that you can do to sort of help yourself along the, the path. You can surround yourself with people who are like-minded, who can offer guidance, who can offer accountability, that word is so important, and also be a sounding board for your ideas. Mastermind groups are not always led by a person, although if you ever want to start a a mastermind group, I'd be happy to lead it for you. Uh, But you can do it with other people who are sort of uh, in the same place or just ahead of you on your journey. This is not to say that you would only ever be learning from them. People who don't know as much often can teach people who know more than they do. I never learn more than when I'm teaching someone who doesn't know as much as I do because it helps you figure out for yourself what you believe, what you think, and how to say it in such a way that you will give those aha moments to the people who are listening to you. So there's something really important there about having a community. For me, one of the reasons that I started the Vegan Writers of New York City group was because of that. I wanted to have a community where we would work together, we would hold each other accountable, we would give each other feedback, and they've become a real resource in my writing life to help me navigate some of the challenges of my writing pursuits. I also have similar sorts of groups for my music. It's really important to have people in your life who you can help and who can help you and where you can hold each other accountable, where you can be resources for one another, and reaching out to those people and really establishing that kind of group effort, if you will, can be really invaluable. Another technique that you can use is to establish a regular practice of reflection. Take time to assess where you are, to assess your progress, to celebrate your achievements, and to really sort of zero in on areas for growth. This kind of self-reflection can provide clarity, it can boost your confidence, and it can keep you aligned with your creative goals. And there you have it. Five key pillars that can pave the way for a successful transition from the corporate world to the pursuit of your creative dreams. So let's take a second and we're going to delve a bit deeper into each one. First, mindset. This is the foundation on which your entire journey is going to rest. Embracing a growth-oriented mindset means acknowledging that you've got the capacity to learn, to adapt, to excel in your chosen creative field. It's about replacing self-doubt with self-belief and understanding that challenges are opportunities for growth, not roadblocks. Next, communication. Sharing your ideas and your aspirations with others can be a transformative experience. It's not just about informing them of your decision, but also it's about inviting them to be a part of the journey. Effective communication, active listening, and empathy, and the ability to articulate your vision in a way that's going to resonate with those around you is an amazing thing. It's a bridge that's going to connect your passion with the support and understanding of the people you love. Then, planning. This is where you take your dreams and turn them all into actionable steps. Create a detailed roadmap, set realistic goals, and establish milestones, and your planning process is going to succeed. It's about envisioning the future you want and working backwards to determine the sort of actions you need to take to get there. A well-thought-out plan provides clarity and it provides direction, and it makes the transition smoother and a lot more manageable. Taking strategic steps is the next really important aspect of this. It's going to involve a combo of courage and calculated risks. This might mean starting with a part-time endeavor while still holding on to your corporate job, or perhaps taking a sabbatical to really immerse yourself into your passion. It's about making those intentional choices that are going to align with your ultimate goal and ensure a transition that's both steady and sustainable. And remember, finances are really an important part of this. You can't just go, woohoo, I'm take this job and shove it, I'm done. Instead, I want you to look at it like this is an opportunity to to get all of the bowling pins in a row and make sure that you know what those steps are so that you don't create chaos in your life. You want to be sure that you don't do that so that the transition is smooth and easy and the people in your life who otherwise might be afraid of it instead support you. And last, seeking support. 
This is not a journey you're going to need to embark on alone. Surround yourself with a community of like-minded people. Find mentors or a coach that can provide invaluable guidance, motivation, and also, big one, accountability. I think these support systems can offer fresh perspectives. They can help you navigate challenges and celebrate your success. Remember, each of these pillars is interconnected, and together they form that strong foundation for your creative pursuit. Embrace them, integrate them into the journey, and watch as they really turn your dreams into an amazing reality. Before I wrap up, I want to leave you with something. If, if you're considering this, if you're thinking about this big leap, consider working with a coach. A coach can help you navigate the process with confidence and clarity. And you know that I do coaching about this sort of thing. If you want to get in touch and do a discovery call about it and see, let's chat for 15 minutes and let's see if I can help you start taking those actionable steps, both on the woohoo creativity side and also on the yeah, realistic side so that you bring them together to succeed. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the show. I have to tell you, this is something so close to my heart. You know, I've talked about this before. It is so important for me to know that we're all out there coming up with those creative solutions, making more art, sure, but also using our minds to come up with creative ideas that are going to help others that are going to, I think, save the world. You know that I've said that countless times that this is my way of helping us save the world is to help other people become more creative so that they can come up with innovative ideas to some of the biggest and some of the smallest problems we're all facing, right? Anytime you can bring innovation and a new, aha, this is possible, to whatever problem it is you're trying to solve, you are going to make the world a better place. All right, this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Solutions Podcast, saying remember to always be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2023. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living what you believe in. Thank you.